So can you um, personalize the chip? Like if you need for some reason, for some other, like how do you get a, a chip that turn on your motorbike or the turn on your computer? Like it's more personalizing the systems that use the chips. Um, so the devices are relatively simple. Um, a lot of the devices have, um, especially the ones that use in animals, just have a unique number. And you use a special reader, <coughs> you wake up the device, it broadcasts it, its number, um, and then it goes back to sleep again. And that's all it does. So there's not a lot of personalization you can do with those devices. Um, the ones that we use, we can actually store data inside it, and we can get the, the chip to do very simple computations. So what we were interested in doing here is allowing the building to build up a profile of the person and then store information about the person on the chip, which meant when they went to a different building, if that building used a similar system, it could read the data and go, okay, this person likes the lights on bright and the, the windows open when it's warm and uh, the air conditioning off and, and that sort of thing. So because we're storing data and reading data off, this is why we've managed to exploit um, a vulnerability which allowed us to propagate a computer virus. Um, so there's a degree of personalization you can do with the system as a whole, but the device itself, at the moment, they're very, very simple. Um, they're like very, very simple computers. Um, but the way it's changed in 10 years, from not being able to do anything with it to being able to do something with it, how that moves again in another 10 years and another 10 years, I think ultimately they're going to be like simple um, but fairly complex and capable computers and we'd be able to do more and more things and find new applications for them. Can you put them somewhere else or is basically in the hand? Uh, the main problem with them is the distance that the chip can be from the reader. Um, essentially the, the device is powered by a coil and the reader has a coil and the two coils there's induction which powers up the chip the further away they are, the more power you need in the reader in order to transmit enough energy to the device to make it work. So um, if you have it in your hand and you're using something like a mobile phone and you want the phone to talk to the chip, there's a very small distance and that works very well. If you have it in your arm and you want to talk to your phone, then the phone needs a massive aerial in order to be able to communicate with it. So there is a bit of a trade-off with this technology because of the way it's powered. And the, the cell phone is any kind of cell phone or is it a special cell phone? Uh, it was a special cell phone, so I um, customised uh, my phone uh, to put a, uh, a reader device in it as well. Um, so before it works, it tries to read a chip. If the chip's there, it works. If the chip's there, it doesn't work.